Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you are enjoying your Tuesday thus far. Hope you enjoyed your weekend with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Shop Small Saturday is apparently a thing. And today is actually known as Giving Tuesday. This is where you're supposed to, you know, give to charitable organizations to make up for all of the capitalism you just used. Well, uh, in case you are looking for a place to give on this Giving Tuesday, you can give to one of two organizations that are near and dear to our hearts here at UFD Tech, because as you may know my son has a rare genetic disorder which is the whole reason why we moved back to the United States and you can give to one of the two 501c3 programs that are out there either Bridge the Gap or the Syngap Research Fund both of them are doing great research and great work to try to get our kids healed and fixed and hopefully better that's a weird way to say that. Well, it's a sad situation, but there's a lot of people doing a lot of good work. So if you're looking for a place to give, we'll leave a link in the video description for those two organizations. But speaking of money, let's talk about today's video sponsor, privacy.com, because likely you're gonna be doing a whole lot of shopping out on the internet this coming holiday season, and privacy.com is gonna make sure that you're safe out on the internet while you're doing that. You're not supposed to use your same password when you're at different retailers logging in here and there, and you also don't want to be using the same card number at every place, because if they get hacked, well, that one card number is then screwed. With privacy.com, you're actually gonna be fine because you can actually create retail specific cards and you can make sure that you know that they got hacked before they tell you because you can see that somebody tried to post a transaction but oh you have a limit on it thanks to privacy.com's handy dandy tools and you're not going to get charged for it you're just going to know something's awry and privacy.com has a few plans that you can choose from there's the free plan where you can get 12 cards a month and get all of the protection that comes with that but then there's also the pro plan for ten dollars a month you get everything that's in the regular one plus one percent cash back on all purchases and and 36 cards a month plus more security features. But in case you have a team of people, well, they also have a team membership with $25 a month, everything in pro plus, you get an account manager, 60 cards a month, and transaction limits tailored to your business's needs so that, you know, when I'm asking Reese, hey, go ahead and purchase some camera equipment since it's on special at B&H, well, you know, he's gonna, he's not gonna be able to spend more than what I give him. Anyways. If you use the link in the video description, privacy.com forward slash UFD, you'll get $5 free on your first purchase with them. That's five free bucks. Go get free money, especially with stuff you're buying this holiday season. $5 is going to go a long way. Use it, privacy.com forward slash UFD. Okay, so let's jump on into the actual news. There's a lot of negative Intel news in the news right now. First up is some leaks or rumors coming out from previous people who have discussed Intel's architecture talking about how one of the next generation architectures, Willow Cove, instead of being rolled out on a 10 nanometer architecture, which we know that Intel has been struggling with, Intel is apparently back manufacturing their architecture to put it on 14 nanometers, which is crazy. It's like AMD saying that we have Zen, but we're gonna put it on 28 nanometers. It's a weird way of doing it. Apparently this is the way for them to get out of sort of some of the hiccups that are coming with the 10 nanometer production, such as lower clock speed. They have the 14 nanometer process refined so they can hit higher clocks. And if they can get a new micro architecture in there, they might actually have faster chips and then they can still maintain the same high clock speeds that we've come to know and love from Skylake, basically, KB Lake. Comet Lake, what are we on now? Coffee Lake. Five gigahertz, but on a new microarchitecture might allow Intel to gain some sort of performance gain that we haven't seen in ages from them. But again, this is because they still cannot get the 10 nanometer manufacturing right. It looks like they're just gonna roll that out on mobile processors as well as some nooks to call it desktop, but not actually get it fully fledged in something like a 11900K or whatever the heck they're gonna call it. Instead, they're gonna take the architecture that they were planning and put it on a process that they know and love and then hopefully skip on down to seven nanometers when they're ready to do that and catch up with AMD's performance at some point. That's not right because Intel still has the better performance. AMD still just has super amazing value. <sighs> Technicalities. But with that, one of the indications is that the Rocket Lake CPUs that are supposed to have the backdated architecture or back processed architecture is only going to go up to eight cores, which is confusing because the upcoming 
Oh, what is it called? Comet Lake? Yes, the upcoming Comet Lake is supposed to have 10 cores. So we're going to go from 8 cores on the 9900K to 10 cores on the 10900K down to 8 cores again on the 11900K. Apple, Intel is just not getting things right, it doesn't seem like, but they're making plans to hopefully fix that so that they don't just lose the entire plot. But Intel did lose the entirety of something, and that is their modem business, the mobile modem business. They sold that to Apple. This was initially reported in July that they were going to be doing this deal that was roughly estimated to be a billion dollars. But with the new report that's coming out that says the deal is finalized, Intel saying that it's a multi-billion dollar loss for them. So Apple now owns Intel's modem business, which will hopefully allow them to get out of Qualcomm's grasp and to vertically integrate everything about their business so that they don't have to rely on anybody and they can create more of a monopoly and be worth 15 trillion dollars instead of one stupid trillion dollars. Apple. And then even worse information coming out about Intel is their graphics card department. There's a well-known leaker over on the Chip Health Forum who's reporting that Project Z isn't going very well. Raja Kadori, the leader behind Project Z, has recently been coming out at trade shows and talking about everything that's going well, but it appears that things aren't as pretty as they're public face would indicate. Number one, they're saying that progress isn't going well. The Ponte Vecchio HPC GPU may not launch within the next two years. The efficiency of Intel's Project Z is worse than NVIDIA, which NVIDIA is really good at efficiency, but also worse than AMD, which makes them a hot furnace of loud blowing fans. This thing is a great GPU at the price point, but it's loud and obnoxious, which is why you gotta water cool the reference editions. Intel may still have that problem. And then they might also have the problem that they won't have AIB support on launch, which in case you're not familiar, is supposed to happen in 2020. We're expecting sometime in June. So in the next six months, Intel will have no partners such as Asus, Gigabyte, MSI with them. They're only gonna have reference models and those are gonna be sold directly from Intel. And then apparently also the drivers are not doing so hot. So Intel, not, not doing great on all counts. CPU department, not great. Mobile modem department, not great. GPU department, not great. Public perception, also not great because there's a European survey that just came out from the European Hardware Association saying that out of over 10,000 enthusiasts who were polled for this, over 60% of them would choose to go with AMD when picking their next processor. So, yikes. Losing ground there, and then also in the Steam hardware survey, they're continuing to lose ground. AMD is accounting for now 20.5%, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but you have to remember that Steam hardware survey includes a ton of superfluous data. Anybody who installs Steam on a secondary computer to run something like Wallpaper Engine is also getting included in the Steam hardware survey. So not everything is actually relevant, but AMD continuing to gain ground in the Steam hardware survey. And it appears that they're gaining ground with the next generation of AP, APUs, excuse me, with the Renoir APUs now getting benchmarked or at least appearing in some databases. This is an APU that's based on the Zen 2 CPU, so all of the goodness of Ryzen 3000, but keeping the old GPU standard of Vega. And it's supposed to supposedly be a mobile platform. We'll see if that's actually true when it comes out, but it's mixing the old with the new and creating something that hopefully will be value oriented. But this is not value oriented. This isn't even design oriented. This isn't even, I don't know what this is, but the PlayStation 5 development kits that were talked about for a while and we had the renderings of are totally real. And here's a picture of them. And what is this? Obviously, the development kits have no indication on final production and the PlayStation 5 will not look like this, but I'm just curious, what's the practicality of having that V shape unless they're sucking air in through that way and it gives some decent airflow set? I'm not sure how that works, but the, wow. There you go. And their TSMC goes because they are now Asia's most valuable company dethroning Samsung thanks to their semiconductor industry, their foundry industry, where they basically produce literally everybody's chips besides Samsung and Intel. They produce everything for Apple, they produce for Nvidia, they produce for AMD, tons of big multi-billion dollar corporations, and TSMC is now Asia's uh, largest company. 
Speaking of NVIDIA, quickly, there's the John Petty Research Organization who came out with their market research findings, seeing that NVIDIA is going crazy. Apparently, the AIB card market increased 42% in Q3 from Q4, and NVIDIA is now up to 73% of market share, up from 67% the last quarter. So AMD continuing to lose ground. Navi was a great value, but people don't seem to be picking these ups over the supercards. That seems to be something that AMD or NVIDIA did well was launching the supercards. But here's a new supercard launch. Asus has formally launched their ROG Strix 2080 Ti White Edition graphics card. So if you were sick of only having the Galax Hall of Fame as your only white option, well, now you have the Strix 2080 Ti White Edition. The only issue being that they didn't change the PCB at all, and it's a black PCB. So if you want a white PCB, Hall of Fame's still your go-to move. But AMD apparently is going to be launching in a move the 5500 RX 5500 on December 12th, and then there's also indication that the 5500 XT will be launched this month as well, with the 5600 XT coming sometime in January, probably announced at CES. So let's get out of the Intel, Nvidia, AMD, the Sherbobble, and go on into some like relevant daily life news for us, which is apparently the Department of Homeland Security wants to roll out more facial scanning recognition technology, not just for foreigners and visitors like they've been doing at major airports, but rather also for US citizens. This is something that they want to do to reportedly cut down on people who are overstaying their visas or coming in on fake documents so that they have facial recognition and if you exploit the people who are legally allowed to be there without you scanning our face, well, then they will know who's illegally there. Anyways, obviously the American Civil Liberties Union is taking issue with this, saying that this is a ridiculous invasion of privacy and it's unconstitutional, but the Department of Homeland Security is saying it's for Homeland Security reasons. So where are you at? Do you want your face scanned at airports, especially when you're at border patrol crossing? And then there's some good news coming out of YouTube. Apparently, after they announced that they're gonna be working with advertisers to help monetize more edgy content, they're also gonna be loosening up the restrictions of violence in video game content, saying that scripted or simulated violence in video games will be treated the same as violence in other scripted content like movies and TV, so that they actually won't have to age gate as many uh, videos as they have been due to the gore and violence that is in games such as Call of Duty. We'll see if this actually gets rolled out effectively and if the AI robots of YouTube can discern what's scripted and simulated versus what's gore for gore's sake. We'll see. Then some space news. In case you didn't know, India tried to launch a lander to the moon and it accidentally crashed, but they got really close. They're only 500 meters off their mark, but splash and scattered all over the lunar surface. Well, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has found the crash site and has identified exactly where it is and what the pieces be. RIP, press F. And then in case you wanna know what type of furniture they're gonna have on Mars, it's gonna be something that requires a million instructions to get to and you're gonna be missing a few pieces at the end of it because apparently IKEA has been working with an Earth-based research facility to find out how to mimic a Mars habitat. So an IKEA designer spent some time living in that habitat to figure out how they would design more suitable small furniture. And then the research organization was like, yes, please actually do that for us. So now it's a symbiotic relationship of Swedish furniture engineering and remote living on a distant planet. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna Mars hippity hop on out of this episode of Hot News. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what was your favorite little bit of Hot News down below. Don't forget about hashtag Giving Tuesday. Uh, give, if you can, to the Syngap Research Fund or Bridge the Gap. Both research organizations will go help, help to make sure that my son will have a bright future ahead of him. Also, don't forget about today's video sponsor, privacy.com forward slash UFD, so that you can stay safe on the internet with your finances and you'll get five free dollars on your first purchase with them. Five dollars. Also, we still have a sale going on for our merch in case you want to pick up anything like the Mobo Diamond design. Press F to pay respects. The coupon code BF2019 to save 20 or 10% is still good to go. So in case you want to enter BF2019 at the link in the description for our merch, you could totally do that. I'm out of here. I talk too long.
And in, we just want to promote here at UFD Tech one of a cause or crap restart. Hey friends, welcome back to hot news. One more, okay.